early September and Paul is doing his rounds. Mr Childerly is best known for his deer stalking, but being the son of a gamekeeper, running a partridge and pheasant shoot is almost inevitable. Yeah, flat out now. All the birds in. He's got these birds in. I'm here this week. It's for the buttermilk shoot. And uh, we have these slightly later. So yeah, we're full up and uh, it is literally all hands on deck and keep it rolling. Try and keep them alive. Paul's job now is to keep his birds fed, watered and safe. And at this point we should probably mention the B word, buzzard, which he can't do anything about. And the F word, foxes, which he can. And that's the reason we find ourselves in R&K Stockcraft in Stony Stratford near Milton Keynes. This is where Paul comes for his shooting kit and gunsmithing. And because he's a busy man with his public appearances, opening local supermarkets and such like, he's asked the professionals set to leave. set up his new Pulsar off, thermal kit too. for him. Oh, yes. You like that? Yeah. Thanks for doing this, Johnny. What's That's all right, no problem. Now, if you could just talk me through what they are and, and what they can do, because and, and do it in layman's terms for me, because I'm, you know... OK. And I just need, need another basics. I will run you through the basics. <laughs> so you look through that end. Yeah. <laughs> so that's an XP50. Yep. Uh, Pulsar XP50 Trail, that's a new, newest version. That's the sister scope to it there, which is uh, an XP38. Yeah. Got that sitting on the 204 and that's sitting on the 22. Both thermal, yeah? Both thermal, so yeah. you're going to be picking up heat sources with these scopes. Yep. So yeah, it's pretty impressive stuff, this. Yeah. They're zeroed in. Yep. So this is point of aim at 100 yards, yeah, this is point of aim on. at 50 yards. Yeah. What I ended up doing was putting, I've got the board, in fact it's here, look. Oh yeah. Hold here you go. So putting washers on a board, I cut a bit of shroud up there, yeah, yeah. screwed a washer onto a board there, and then I've got a mini blowtorch, yeah. and took that down and just blasted these, and then went back to the shooting position. Ran back or? Ran back, <laughs> quick as I could, mate. Yeah. <laughs> uh, had a look through it. I also took another day optic down with me as well, because you still, you can't see your bullet strikes, right, so yeah. you, it's a very important you've got to take a spot and scope with you as well, yeah. otherwise you'll be running forward and back and forward and back and forward and back. Yeah. I think, grouping um, well. It's grouping well, yeah, grouping yeah really well. it's looking good. Can you come out with us tonight please? I'm slightly worried. Yes, I, I am. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come out. I'm, I'm coming out to <laughs> oversee it all. An on, <laughs> on-site <laughs> mechanic. <laughs> That's it, yeah, you got it. Absolutely. Yeah, I want, with us. I want to be there as well so that, you know, if something gets missed, you can't blame me. Yeah. Zero in. Where's that target actually? Yeah. Show the target. There you go, David. So there's three bullets in there at 100 yards, okay? So everything gets missed, all right? It's not my fault. <laughs> in the middle. Oh, yeah. Has it jumped across now? Yep. Has it given you a big list of reticles? Uh, yes. Do you and get many people come in to ask you to do this, or is it a thing you recommend for people to come in? Uh, yeah, and, and it's increasing. Right, so if you look it's a service there. we offer, and I so guess there's other shops around the country doing the same now, thing. And we can come up and down um, but yeah, brightness. certainly it's something we do. Yeah, I mean, the way to learn it is actually doing it yourself, but it is. you can use a lot of rounds to get, you know, with a yeah. scope not put on properly. If there's any gremlins in between your mounts, your rifle um, and your mount setup, they should have been looked at already. Yeah. So you know everything's good to go and it's, it's just about you driving it then. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing for me. This is not a play toy. This is a, this is a tool. For Absolutely, yeah, so yeah, I, yeah. I can't have any mistakes on it really. That's why... Um, you know, tonight it's it's going to be put to its paces, and it's not a test. It's actually going to be doing a job. Hopefully, we'll strike strike. Uh, Should be all right. Strike 100 percent. I'll put it on the right way around. So I think we're I think we're all right. This technology is still expensive, but if you need to protect your feathery investments, it starts to make economic sense. The one issue that has always put off Paul is being able to distinguish between a fox and a Chinese water deer, and he has a lot of Chinese water deer. If there are any issues with that tonight, the thermal won't be an option for him. Wrapped up and ready, it'll be the first time he'll have used a thermal for this job, which earned him his go faster stripes when he was a younger man. Actually, it's the first time ever shooting rabbits with a thermal. Never done it before. Um, when I was younger, I used to shoot thousands of rabbits with a 2-2. Um, that's how I paid for my first sports car. <laughs> Cool. was headshot 2-2 two, two rabbits, believe it or not. I was shoot about 150, 200 a week. Um, what was your sports car? 
<laughs> it was a Renault 19 16 valve, all singing, all dancing. <laughs> money well spent then? No, broke down, it cost me a lot of money. <laughs> quality wheels, Mr Childerly, quality wheels. On a more robust sort of vehicle, Paul has added a new frame to help with the gamekeeper's nocturnal activities. Yeah, we custom built it basically, a bit of health and safety and also a bit of uh, steady rest. So combination of the two, nice and easy. Get in. So, you know, they're not going to fall out the sides. Um, and then also get in, nice rest. Yeah, works a treat. Literally just done its first outing, so. Hopefully it'll be lucky. As soon as we are set to go, the rain starts and Paul doesn't Can get wet. It? Can you see? It's raining. Don't do rain. The rain seems to have put off the rabbits, but not the foxes, so we cross to the 204. Johnny spots and Paul reacts when the opportunity arises. Press record, don't you worry. It's a vixen, and Paul's happy. The only thing that's frustrating him a little is the speed of covering the ground. This is above the pen we were at earlier. And, uh, knocked her here. The old vixen. Which is, uh, will be causing us a bit of havoc, but not anymore, luckily. So, yeah, I'm actually really pleased. Um, it's a bit like freaky you can't see the tail so obviously you're just looking at it's like four legs and a body um, but yeah you pick them up straight away if you haven't got to cover thousands of acres it's actually a really good method but i think for me because we're covering a lot of ground it'd be quite good to use it to use the lamp um, with the red filter on and then turn it off as soon as you spot them um, and then obviously shoot them with the with the thermal our next fox is another welcome one. This dog fox had escaped the keeper a few days before. That's a crafty old fox. Do you see it, Johnny? Yeah. He was sat there looking at us, wasn't he? Yeah. And um, there was three or four Chinese water deer out there and picked at them straight away. And uh, he sat there and he squat, squatted down looking straight at us. And he was, there was probably about five or six partridges around him. And uh, then he had enough and he was just heading back down to the, to the roadway to get back to the wood. But I took so long because I had to press record. Otherwise it would have been shot probably a good 30 seconds before. So yeah, very good. Pleased with that one. I'm really pleased with that one. Are you pleased Nick with that? <laughs> no, yeah, good one to get those. Yeah, a lot of people said you can't identify, you know, with Chinese water deer and, and uh, muntjac and foxes and bits and pieces. But I thought it was quite easy to identify it tonight. But admittedly, uh, over 200, it, you would struggle, two, 300. Which means you have to do a bit more manoeuvring or squeaking and get them in. So, no, good night. The late one. <laughs> <laughs> so, a successful field test of the Pulsar kit and Paul has a new method of fox control that keeps his pheasants and his deer safe. For more about Pulsar's kit, go to thomasjacks.co.uk.